In this video, we are going to discuss about arrays in Java. What are Java arrays? And why do we exactly need any particular Java array? So arrays in Java are homogeneous data structure implemented in Java as object. And the use of array is that it can store n number of values. That means one or more values for a specific data type which we have discussed in the data type video also that array is particularly a non-primitive data type and what does it does it can store n number of values or one or more values for a specific data type and you can access those particular items which are stored with the help of indexing you can access those items also so arrays in java are homogeneous data structure now why do we need a particular array now arrays are important structure to hold data because we have said that it can hold one or more num um, number or entries of data. So it is very important as a structure to hold the data. Java allows us to hold many objects of same type using array. Many objects of same type can be stored with the help of array. And it can be used with the help of loop to assess the element by their index, which I have mentioned that you can assess the element with the help of index. And how can we do that? With the help of loop or with the help of nesting of the loops, we can do that. So this is why we need array. Now, array offers a convenient mean of grouping related the information. Information can be grouped together. For example, there are five students and you need to store the roll numbers. Then rather than giving five entries one at a time, you can store that in particular form of array. Let's say if you want to store the values I am storing as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Let's say that this is a particular array. Now this 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are integers. Okay, these are the integers values. Now if I want to check the indexing, how is the indexing going on? Then indexing doesn't start with 1, it starts with 0. So the size of array is 5, that's true. The size of this particular array is 5. But the indexing starts with 0. That means if it is asked that at 0th position which element is there, so there is 1. If first index which element is there, then it is 2 and so on. So array always starts from the index 0. And now obtaining an array in two step process, what we need to do? First, we must declare the variable of desired array type and then we must allocate memory that will hold the array using the new keyword for the assignment of it. So let us see that how can we initialize a particular array. So firstly, what you need to do is you need to give the data type. Let's say it is an integer type of array. This is the variable and with the help of new keyword, we're declaring a new array and the size of that particular array I am giving as Five. like this you can also do now here you, in some other thing you can also see that like this it is also given so there is no difference both are the same thing so this is particularly the data type this is variable which is being mentioned for the size of the array or the name of the array which we need to assess and this particular is known as the size of array so this is how we can initialize a particular array now we can also give the values of any particular like after the initialization only if you want to give the values you want to give the values at the time of initialization only then how can you do that for example let's take this array only int a new int okay this particular array is there and using the curly braces you can give the values this is how you can give the values. So this is particularly giving us the size of the array and also the elements will be entered. That index has to be given in the square bracket. This is for the indexing. So how will be the elements entered? Like this, the elements will enter at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, fine. And at 0, there is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These are the values. This is the values entered at the index. It starts from here and it ends at this particular side. So arrays can be initialized also when they are declared and it will automatically create a large enough to hold the number of elements which you specify with the help of array initializer. So now we know that that arrays are of two types, 
the single dimension and multi dimension array so the single dimension array is very simple which we have declared here only that is having only one particular dimension and we have also shown you that how can we initialize a particular array now let us do a basic program for assessing the elements also from the array and how can we do that for example let's say that we, i want to check for the months in a particular day for that i will firstly initialize the array then i will give the size of that array and then i will give certain values and then i will with the help of system dot out print and statement i will fetch the that this particular month has this amount of days that's i want to do so that i can do with the help of a single dimension array so let us do that in our ide so here you can see that i have firstly initialized an array that is days and i have given the size as 12 so then i have given the entries of the particular that if this particular index this value has to be inserted and then i have printed that june has the sixth index value is june this many days and then it is going to print this particular statement so as i execute this particular program here you can see that it prints that june has 30 days so this is how exactly a one dimensional array works that it is exactly in one dimension there is only inserting let's say values in the rows in any particular rows of array these values are inter inserted and then it gets printed next we are going to discuss about the two dimension array so this is what we have discussed this is a one dimension array that is an only one dimension let's say it has only rows next we will discuss about the two dimensional array that what are 2d array so in java dimensional array or multi dimensional array are exactly arrays of array that there will be a particular array of any other array so that particular is known as two dimension that means two arrays will be now declared let's say how it going to be declared such as integer and we can say here a is a particular array being declared and then with the help of new keyword and int what we are going to do let's say 4 and 5 so what it is going to do exactly that there will be four rows this first indicate for the rows and this indicates the columns so the rows are four and there will be five columns and how will be the indexing going on that 0 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 so this determines you the index the columns and next it comes to rows so it will be first row 0th column second row 0th column and the third row 0th column so you can see here four rows and five columns and similarly the rest will be filled 0th row and the first first row and the first column and then again it comes to first row second column first row third column first row fourth column similarly 2 1 2 2 2 3 and 2 4 here also 3 1 3 2 3 3 and then it comes to 3 and 4 so this is a particular two dimensional array that means the values will be entered in both the per dimension that is in two dimension and this is one dimension in only one direction or only one dimension let's say the rows the values are inserted but here you can see there are five columns and four rows so a two dimensional array how can we do that we have studied about loops and we know that with the help of nesting of loops that is two for loops included that means firstly if i am going to write a for loop for i let's say that i equals to 0 and i less than 4 i plus plus so this is for the rows and next for the columns what i am going to write i am going to again write for loop j equals to j denotes the column j 0 j less than 5 and j plus plus so this is how the both the arrays will be made that means the rows and the columns in the console window you will see only that a particular row of elements have been displayed but they are actually in two dimension the arrays are actually initialized in two dimensions so let us execute a program for multi-dimensional array also and see how it works now here you can see that i have firstly declared a multi-dimensional array of four rows and five columns then with the help of nesting of for loop i have declared the rows and the columns also that up till which value the rows and columns will be printed and i have used a k variable that is actually counting the steps and printing the values and again incrementing and executing the first for loop for rows and then for columns this particular for loop is actually for printing the values that is generating and this is printing all the values because the system dot out print statements are used here 
Now, as I run this program, you will see the values from 0 to 19 will be generated. Here you can see that the values are generated and it is actually a two-dimensional array because it has generated for the rows and columns also. Now, I have told that arrays are basically those data structure in which we can store the homogeneous value. That means n number of values of a particular data type can be stored. So we have discussed about integer, but if you want to do for character or float values, how can you do that? Nothing, you have to just change the data type. Let's say for char a, if you want to make a multi-dimensional array only, then you will use the new char and give the values of rows and columns. This is how you can check for the char data type. Similarly, for float also, you can write float a new float and you can give the values which you want to give for float or the decimal type of values you can give. So, in arrays, we can store n number of values and assess them with the help of indexing of same data type. So, arrays are much used as a non-primitive data type in Java. By the end of this video, we have discussed about arrays in Java and for more concepts and programs, we will look into upcoming videos.